Hi everyone, thought I'd do a video and show you where I am. I'm here. Well, I'm getting down to the wire here. I'm uh, going around the body, seeing what needs to be done. I suspended a 55 gallon drum full of water from my frame to torque the frame a little bit to build the body upon. And I have the frame sitting on a roll around wooden rack that puts it dead level so that as I'm working on the body I can use a level on various body parts as well. It also has casters I can roll it around. I like working this way. I've done a number of cars this way. But I'm going around the body, you know, all the big all the big work is done and I'm going around the body just looking to see um, you know the closer you get to being finished the worse uh, the worse it can be if you don't find the little faults. And I'm looking around here trying to understand what all the little faults are. And I thought I'd just give you a, an example of the things that I think of when I'm trying to close up a body restoration and begin to paint. This is the sort of stuff that I look for. Maybe you'll find a tip here that'll work for you. Some of these body panels have a little burnt whoop de doo on the end. There's one here. There's one here that actually sticks out and prevents the fender from going all the way up against the wing extension. Most people grind that off. You can see it quite plainly there. But when you grind it off, you get a sharp little edge and that little edge is very hard to cover with paint and they tend to corrode. So what I do, I'm gonna point and aim the camera. What I do is, I want to take this fender off, turn it upside down, and I'm going to use my little handy dandy Harbor Freight Spot Blaster, and I'm going to spot blast the inside of that. And I'm going to put a weld bead right there. It's just a big spot weld. So that when I take my uh, uh, flap wheel and square this up and take this little protuberance off the back, there's metal there. And then you don't have a problem painting it. Similarly here, if you're going to fix that to make this look right, turn it upside down, blast the inside, put a weld bead right here so when you carve this off, you've got good metal there. Another thing I look for is what sort of problems I'm going to have with the body generally. And you know how uh, a lot of guys tend to be, they won't really bolt their stuff together fully to really understand what they have wrong. My problem is, is that the bottom bolts that attach the bottom of the wing to the body, only that far right hand side bolt meets a hole. Because this is a reproduction outer sill, the front two holes don't even line up at all. So consequently, I'm not really sure uh, what this could look like. It's not quite in the right position yet. So what I'm going to have to do is, I'm going to have to move those holes. It, uh, it comes together right but the hole is just not in the right position. Just one of those things. The reproduction sills weren't exactly the right shape, but they're close enough. And with a non-reflective finish on it, a gravel guard or whatever, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Gotta pay a lot of attention to this spot right here. Make sure you don't have any cracks. Make sure it's good and strong. You gotta pay attention to stress fractures around in here. Also, make sure that when these uh, uh, pop rivets were drilled out that the holes weren't drilled out oversized because then you'll go to put your, uh, your snap, the male part of your snap in and the rivet won't uh, grab the metal. So always check this. Always check your rivet holes. Another thing too is sometimes they're sunk in from uh, previous owners. So I'm gonna back this up with a small bolt and a nut and I'm gonna ease that out so it's flush. Another thing, these spots really show up on a paint job. Let me see if I can show this better. You know, this trunk lid has been dropped and drug around and you know, who knows uh, where it's been. So this corner right here is worn off. Similarly, this corner right here on the deck is rounded. You can't fill this with Bondo. You can't put filler in here. I don't care. You can use all metal. I don't care what you use. 
nothing will hang around on these little edges. You've got to spot blast that, put a weld bead in there so that when you grind it, you've got metal. Similarly here, very importantly here, filler won't stay on this point. So when you are getting ready to refine this point, your paint job is about to happen, you just can't, you, you can't put filler in it. You cannot put filler in it. This area right here had a little work already. I can't quite get this adjusted yet. And I haven't decided whether I'm going to smack this with a rubber mallet and back it up with a piece of wood or whether I should cut a little slot uh, down in here and relieve this up. One thing about relieving this up is that it makes this gap wider. So I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do there. But I've already refined uh, these edges here, well not on this side, but on the, on the other side. Because there was just a, you know, a, a spot worn off. And like I say, filler won't, won't stick on there. It will not stick on there. I've sanded until I'm sick. I think uh, I'm pretty close to having it exactly where I want it. I've block sanded this many times. So I don't think I'm going to have any trouble if I decide to color sand. But I'll tell you right now, if my paint job comes out good enough, and if the orange peel is minimal, I'm not going to color sand. I'm not going to color sand. In a previous video, I raised this corner up. So that worked out well. In a previous video, I cut a slot along in here so that, that the shape of the edge on this side was the duplicate of what the fender was offering. So now this fender fits well. Previously, this piece came out to a point like this. This little spot right here came out and it wasn't very much. It was just a tiny bit. But it meant that when you bolted the fender on tight, you had a little spot right here that bulged, that bulged out. And I've got the same thing over here. You might not be able to see it, but you may notice right here. As a matter of fact, let me, well, let me do this. Well, see about where it is. You see where it's bulging out? Right at the top of the curb of the fender flare. It's because at the factory, when they installed this, loaded this together, this comes out to a little bit of a point. So again, I'm going to have to take a thin curve, cut a curve right along in here, bolt the fender onto it to relieve it. So the fender sits there without this without this little bulge that is caused by having it bolt around this little point and then weld it back together. I cut that little spot, I back it up with a very thin piece of uh, steel rod and I weld the whole kit and caboodle, does a, does a great job. Again, you can't fill this up with, uh, with Bondo. Spot blast and weld those spots. But as you can see, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I fret at this portion of the project. My shop's a mess. You're going to have to excuse me. My shop is a mess. So I'm certainly getting there. Uh, caulking has been hard. I haven't been able to do a nice job caulking. So I, uh, anyone who has any ideas about how to do a good job on that, by all means, please tell me. I have a uh, nut here that's broken out. I've got to straighten this out and fix it, weld a new nut on there. And, uh, you know, but generally speaking, I'm looking, I'm looking pretty good. This finisher that goes underneath the grill, I had to cut it loose right in the middle so that it would accurately follow the contour of the front of the body. So I've had lots of little finesse issues. I'm currently sanded down to about 220. As you can see, it's not nearly smooth enough. This is Nason Full Poxy. I really like this product. It sands great. Other people that have problems, they might be using the wrong sandpaper. I'm using the Norton product. I don't have any problems at all. So my next step is going to be to sand this within an inch of its life. I'm not trying to preserve the primer that's on it. I'm just trying to block sand it and to get it perfect. And then uh, once I'm there, I'll um, epoxy prime one more time and then uh, start painting. Uh, the hood uh, might look for you with eagle eyes to have a lot of bond on it, but this actually just has a, a, a faint white.
but it's been really hard to get this right. The hood is very wobbly and when you press on it the metal squishes around and I at one time had thought that I was going to have to lay it on the floor and uh, use uh, aerosol foam to give it some support but I managed to get it. But it's been a very, very difficult thing to get right. And this front edge too has been hard to get right. It had a very slight little bump and man is that ever hard to do. Anyway, but I'm getting there. I think uh, 20 or 30 more hours uh, might be all that I need. I've got new floors and inner and outer sills and put the triangulations back in and it's, this car's got a nice plenum. I've got a EMP brace that I built on the inside that allows me to put the uh, fuzzies in the door because I have this space here. So this is the this is what my brace looks like. I built it out of half inch EMT. Pigeon pooped it together. It worked fine. A spot weld about every three quarters of an inch. Uh, I don't uh, I don't parcel out the spot welds. I'm not stingy with spot welds. I, I spot weld it. So anyway, that's the report. 30 more hours and uh, I should just about have it.